In this video, I'll show you how we can use a finite state machine as a traffic light controller. And the finite state machine will be most of the system, if not all of the system. So in here, I'm showing you like some of the description and some of the um, specification for that street or that traffic light controller. So let me explain it. You can, you can pause the video, read it, but I'll explain it here as well. So what we have is we have a couple of streets. We have street A and we also have street B. And street A is usually the main street or I'm gonna consider it the main street. And each of the streets actually have a bunch of sensors that detect whether a car is passing through the street or stopping at the street. So these sensors in here is what I call sensor for A. It detects the cars on street number A or street A. And in this one here, I have sensor B, which detects the, um, the cars on street, um, street B. Okay. So here, the street B. So what the traffic light controller is doing is actually controlling the red, the yellow, and the green for street B and the red and green and yellow and green for street um, A. And this is a schematic or this is just a block diagram of the whole finite state machine or the whole traffic light controller. Like, well, we're gonna use FSMs to implement it, but that's for the whole controller. I'll take a clock, the inputs from the sensors, and it will output for each one of the colors or the lights you're gonna see, the green for A, yellow for A, red for A, similarly for green for B, yellow for B, and red for B. So here's the, the specification that is mentioned here is the following. Street A is the main, so by default that street should always stay green if there are no cars. And if it is on, or if you turn the street A on for, um, for any reason, it should stay at least for 60 seconds. So what I'm going to say is uh, street A, for example, uh, STR A should last for at least 60 seconds. Like whenever, whenever you turn it on, it should last for 60 seconds. Now, it stays on all the time unless now a car comes in on street number B. And the way you know that there's a car on street number B because sensor B will be triggered. And whenever that sensor is active high, whenever SB is 1, you know that there's actually a car in here. So if that street is at high, what you need to do is you need to um, wait for a little bit and then um, you turn the yellow for that street and then um, the red for that street. And of course, you turn the green for street B and you go on. And whenever you actually turn on um, anything for Street B, um, you la it should last for at least 50 seconds before I actually consider anything else. So at the end of the 50 second after you turn on the green for street number for street B, for example, there are cars. If there are more cars on street B and there are no cars whatsoever on street A, so that means SB is one and SA is zero, what you can do is you can you can add another 10 second and you can keep doing this in 10 seconds increment as long as there are street B has some cars and street A has no cars. The minute you have a car on street A, that's it. Street B will stop. Okay. And that's how we're going to design this particular um, traffic light controller. Um, we're going to design it in that in that way. So let's see how we can do this. Um, the implementation uh, can be with or without timers. Um, but what I'm going to do in the implementation just to simplify everything is I'm going to assume that my clock is running on a 10 seconds increment this way because I have the five sec f f uh, 60 seconds here, 50 seconds in here, and 10 seconds in here. Frankly speaking, that 10 seconds is the reason why I'm using that. It's the lowest or the smallest granularity that I care about. Okay, so I'm going to assume that my clock is 10 seconds. Of course, you can redesign the whole finite state machine using the timers and, and operating at a clock that is 100 megahertz, which is 10 nanosecond periods or so, or so forth. But anyway, we're going to just operate at a clock that, oper like, that has a period of 10 seconds. So how do we design this? It's really straightforward. You can actually pause the video and, and try it on your own and then come back and see my solution. So the solution is here. Um, here's a solution and here's what we came up with. So, or I came up with. So we have, um, we have a state in here. So what we have is each one of the state would last for 10 seconds because I'm, I'm using a clock that lasts for 10 seconds. So this state in here is the reset state and usually this is for street A. So let's assume that this is the minute you turn a green and um, red for um, for street B. So you're gonna last for one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the specification here said like A has to stay for 60 seconds if you turn them on. So you turn them on for 60 seconds. As long as there are no cars on B, you're gonna keep at this point. At this point. So you're gonna keep at 10 second increment and 10 second increments or 10 seconds increments. Okay, this didn't say that it's 10 seconds, but that's what we're gonna do. For 10 seconds increment, if there are no cars on B, okay? Once you get a car in B, what you do is you go to a state, it's an intermediary state where you actually tell A 
yellow basically prepare to stop and then red still red at b because we're not ready yet because the other street is or the other cars are still moving and then you go to a different state in here and this street this state is in here uh, where a street b is green and street a is red and you should last here for 50 uh, seconds so this is one two three four and five and at the end of it like what we did before it's actually i'm gonna say well as long as there are no cars on a and there's a car or a bunch of cars on b i'm gonna keep doing this at 10 10 seconds increment and this is what you see in here and we keep doing this we keep doing this we keep doing this unless there's a car at b at a okay there's this is an or in here not an and so there's an and in here but there's an or in here so what this order in here is telling me, you need to leave the state and actually go and open up street A if there's a single car at A. It takes priority because it's a main street or B doesn't have any cars anymore. That's it. So what happens, like, even, even though that A might not have any cars, it's the default, it's the main street, so it should, should stay open most of the time. So what you do is you go in here and the state in here is just um, A is still red. Uh, B is yellow, so stop, uh, prepare to stop, and then you go on again, and then you turn it on to green, and you go at least for 60 seconds, and then out, out, at the 60 seconds, you, you keep doing it in 10, 10 seconds increment. So as you can see, the implementation is pretty straightforward. We're doing it um, without a timer. This is why you do see me doing this here. It's pretty much the same output for this, 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 and this, and this, and that. And also these ones here have the same outputs as well. And the reason why is because we're operating at a clock that is 10 seconds. If I want to deal with timers, I can I can add a reset signal in here and just like figure out like a bunch of timers, one for 50, one for 10, one for 60, or maybe that 10, and I just keep a counter like on top of it. Like I can I can overcomplicate it, but this is just a simple implementation. So let's go to Vivado and see how we can actually write code to describe this finite state machine and test it. All right, so here's the implementation for that finite state machine for the whole traffic light controller for that matter. You can see that it has a couple of inputs. These are the sensors for A and B, and we have the red, yellow, green, and the red, yellow, green for the street A and street B. And if you take a look at the traffic light controller, it, it goes from state zero all the way to state 12. That means I need 13 states. 13 states need four bits. So this is why I have zero to three in here. Of course, I have the local parameters. And as usual, I have the sequential state part. And then the next state logic, you can see I can write for every state separately and it'll be a really super long um, case statement. But then I realized that if you are in S0, the transition to S1 is automatic regardless of what the input is. S1, S1 is the same, 2 is the same, 3 is the same, 4 is the same, not 5 though. So you can see as I wrote S0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then when I was writing the code, I realized after the after like I went through S5 and S6 because they depend on some sort of an input to sensors, I realized 7 goes to 8, 8 goes to 9, 9 goes to 10. And so what I did is I added them in here, S6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And really, I mean, all I did is the state next is just uh, whatever is the current state plus 1 because they're numbered numerically, basically. They're ordered numerically. So I decided to say, okay, I took care of this, 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 and this in this case, and these cases as well in here. So let me just do that. So I took care of these. The rest actually depend on some sort of like inputs from the outside the world. So let's see it. So what I did is I said, okay, let me deal with S5. So S5 in here, you can see it. It depends on the external input SP. So if it's not SP, basically there are no cars on SP. I'm going to stay in the same state, S5. Other than that, I'm going to go to S6. Okay, so I dealt now with uh, this particular one. Now I can deal with S6 actually. So you can see, actually I dealt with S6 already, it's here. So I just didn't highlight it. So let me highlight it. It's actually included in here. Okay, and then we go all the way to S11. So S11 is in here. It's telling me basically I can do these and, and this is actually an or, and you can see the and and the or. I Either go, I either stay in 11 or I go to 12. So I dealt with that one here. And then 12 is really, I could, I could have added one to 12, but 12 plus one is 13 and it's a state that doesn't exist. So the next go around is gonna go and tell me, well, I don't see this one here, so I'm gonna move it to th uh, zero. What would have happened is basically I'll be adding like another state in here that does nothing. So anyway, so this is why I wrote it separately here. So you need to actually say from 12, it's gonna go to zero. And now let's take a look at the outputs and the outputs. I realized, I mean, I can go to each state and just write the output separately. There's six outputs total, as you can see from the inputs and output in here. So these are three for A and three for B. And the way I wrote it, I said like, okay, let me just turn them off, turn off all the lights. And then um, this figure is written in such a way or 
uh, drawn in such a way or the state diagram is drawn in such a way that it indicates whenever I turn on certain lights. So I figured out, okay, so I'm going to turn them off, all of them. And then based on the state register, whether it's uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5, I know that this is actually green for A and red for B. And that's basically what I did in here. And then, of course, I have the transitional states in here where I have yellow. Okay, so this is yellow for A, red for B still. And then in here, I have uh, basically all the green for B and red for A. And then the last one in here is actually for red for A and yellow for B. And that's basically it. that describes the whole traffic light controller. So I went ahead and I created the test bench for it as well. So you can see it in here. What I did is I, uh, I created the test bench in here. I instantiated the unit under test. I'm covering the test benches just because what I did is I added a couple of signals in here. Um, just because six outputs is really tedious to read if I want to read all of them. So what I did is I combined all of them with light A and light B. And based on the value, I can figure out whether it's red, yellow, or green. You can read this on your own. It's really not that difficult. Let me just show you the output of that simulation. All right, so here's the uh, test bench output. And as, as we expected, there's a lot of signals. Frank speaking, these are all like uh, parameters. So I'm gonna remove the R, I'm gonna remove the yellow, I'm gonna remove the green, I'm gonna remove the T. These are the light A and light B, the new signals I created just to make reading this um, particular test bench a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna move them up here. If you want the like uh, the six different, like red, yellow, green, I mean, you can read them separately, but I find it a little bit easier just to focus on this one here. So I'm gonna go to the test bench and I'm just gonna scroll up here. So red is zero, yellow is one, green is two, and you can see it in here. So let's take a look at what's happening. So in here, I issue a reset for a short period of time as usual. And then I say sensor A and sensor B has no cars. They're both at zero. So you can see the light A, which is for street A is at two and two is green. So, and then light B is at zero. That's exactly what we expected. And then all of a sudden there's a car at B, even though there are no cars at A. So what happens like we're gonna go through um, an intermediate step we can make A as yellow, prepare to stop and then um, and then becomes red and while uh, B will be green. And we're gonna stay from here and we can add that in here to here. Let me just do this here. It's uh, telling me it's actually 90 and it stayed at 19. Well, you see nanoseconds in here. I generated the time as um, my time, my clock here is at nanosecond, but it's pretty much the same. You can just treat the nanosecond as second and it'll operate at the same um, speed. I just didn't want to overcomplicate everything in here. So this clock that I generated is as a 10 nanosecond, just ignore the nano and just treat it as second. It'll be reading the same exact functionality. Anyway, so we go back in here. So you can see um, there were no cars at A and what happens, I stayed in B. It stayed for 90, nanos 90 seconds because there were no cars in A. But the minute there was a car in A, I gave it just 10 nanoseconds and then we started, we made it yellow and we opened up the street for A. And now there are cars on both street and you can see that we're gonna last at least here, according to specs, I'm going to go in here to here and I'm going to stay at least um, for 60 seconds. That's actually I'm opening up street A for 60 seconds. Then here I should just open it for 50 seconds. Let's just do that in here and then we can do that in here and you can see um, it's 50 seconds exactly. And you can de you can see that what's happening in here all the way to the end. And at the very end, I am opening up like here. You're, you'll see you'll see what's happening. For example, um, street um, street A becomes zero, and zero that's red, and then street B becomes um, here. And then for some reason, uh, there were no like even though it was red um, on street B, I let the car leave. I think it's one of these cars that leave at the end. But anyway, you can check the functionality of this test punch. And again, if you wanna, if you care about the red and the yellow and the green, they actually match. Let's see this one here, for example. This tells me it's zero for light A and zero is red. That means the red signal for A is high and the rest of them should be zero. And that's exactly what we saw. And of course it's two for light B and two is green. So that means green for B and that's exactly what we have in here, which is one. And uh, I just, again, it's just easier to read it that way with a light A and light B.